welcome back to our channel. I'm Elena. And I'm Erin. And today we're going to do sort of a get to know us video where we answer some questions from the 54321 tag from BookTube and some random makeup tag questions. Do you have your phone? Because you gotta read your notes. I don't have barely any notes. <laughs> we're, we're winging I'm it. winging this. All right, so starting with the 54321 tag. The first question is five books that you love. Okay. So my first pick is Akata Witch by Nettie Okorafor. It's like a Nigerian Harry Potter situation. Way fewer plot holes and a way better friend group. So if you like Harry Potter, this is Harry Potter but better. First my pick. first one is A Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. It's my favorite Sally Rooney book. I've read all of them and this one's by far my favorite. It's the one that has uh, the happiest ending if Sally Rooney is capable of writing a happy ending um, and the characters are just the most likable of all of hers. I love that one too. Yeah, that That's one's good. One. My second pick is Tress and the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. Picking one Brandon Sanderson book for this list was so hard and I wouldn't even say Tress is my all-time favorite Cosmere book but there's something special about it. It's so funny and sweet and the subversive damsel and distress trope is just makes for such a fun read. My next one would be Beach Read by Emily Henry. I am in love with Gus, the love interest in this book. He is by far the greatest man in the history of men. Um, and <laughs> no shade to her husband. <laughs> and I just think like she did a really good job with the character development in this book. I really want to read that one. Yeah, it's good. You should. Okay, our next one I think is the same. It's Untamed by Glennon Doyle. This is like a it's memoir style book. It's so good. And you know, it's funny now that there's an Untamed podcast. The podcast really doesn't do it for me. It's just not my thing. But the book is so good. I still think about little things from that book that I learned or changed my perspective as I was going through. And I feel like we read this around the same time, right? We did, yeah. And it's really easy to digest because it's like short essay style chapters. Yeah. So you can really like read one, really digest it, and then come back to it at any time. It follow. I mean, like it follows like embracing her true sexuality yeah. and being with the person that she really wanted to be with. Yeah, who happens to be one of the coolest people in the entire so world. So true, so Walmart. true. Yes, okay. My next pick is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. So good. This book made me start using the highlight feature on my Kindle because mm -hmm. there were so many lines that yeah. I would just wanted to go back and read over and over again. It's such a vibe. Highly recommend. Really cool, like sci-fi. I don't. I'm yeah. not really into sci-fi, but that book is incredible. It's so unique for yeah. the sci-fi genre. Yeah. Um, okay. My next one is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. Specifically, this book. Not the first, not the third, the second is by far the best of the trilogy. And I could read it over and over and over and still love it. The pacing is so good. The action is so good. Obviously the tension, the sexual tension, the romance, the build up, there is some spice in it. Like I just think it hits every single box for me. I agree, and I was a romantic -y hater. Yeah. And I even loved it, so I agree with everything you said. Okay, my fifth choice is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. I read this book like six or seven years ago, and since then I've read one Murakami each year. But nothing will ever come close to the high that I got from Kafka on the Shore. It is so good. In fact, I kind of don't like most of the other Murakamis that I've read and I wonder if I'm like sort of expecting something that's not going to be there again for mm -hmm. me. But this book specifically is the magical realism of my dreams. It's really weird, but it's really good. Okay, my last pick is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Uh, Elena told me to read this book. It was an amazing retelling of the Arthurian legend. Um, so many like surprises, really well paced, excellent character development, really good like first 
introduction. Is that her first novel? Is that her first novel? I don't know. If that's her first novel, I am so impressed. Yeah. And you learn so much in that book. I mean, it was just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that book is so good. It's good. I remember, like, screaming at the ending. I know. The ending is <laughs> like, insane. literally. It is. It really is. Okay, so the next question in the tag is, who are four auto-buy authors for you? And I think we should just, I'm going to say my four, and then okay. you say your four. All right, so my four are Brandon Sanderson. Of course. Sally Rooney. Yes. Um, I'm saying Travis Baldry. Aaron says I can't say that because he's only <laughs> he's written only one. Has one book. <laughs> And I'm gonna buy the second. <laughs> My last pick is Bolu Babalola. Great. She's written Love and Color and what? Honey and Spice. Honey and Spice. And they're both really different. They don't sound different. They, I know. <laughs> I, that's so true. They don't sound different. I don't even like traditional romance stories typically, but yeah. I really liked Honey and Spice. I'll have to read it. I'm I really remember. think you should. You'll like yeah. it. Okay, my four off the top of my head. Sally Rooney. Good one. Um, Emily Henry. Mm, yeah. I will auto read, buy slash read anything she writes. I will not always necessarily. It might not be massively your favorite enjoy it, but I will. I time. trust her enough that I would buy and read all of them. I'm going to say Madeline Miller. I love Greek retellings, and she is by far the best author at that. She does it beautifully. Really? Should I just say Travis Baldry? <laughs> I do really like his book, and I'm planning to buy the second book. Exactly. So, that counts. Okay. I stand by gonna, it. We're going to count that. All right. Next, we have our three favorite genres. Okay. My top three genres are epic fantasy or high fantasy, you know. Is there a difference? Technically, yes. A little bit. I mean, but there's a lot of overlap, so I'll say epic fantasy. Okay. My second... Genre is magical realism, and that is different. And then my third genre, a wild departure here, sci-fi. Do I read books outside those genres? Yes, all the time. But those are the genres that consistently do it for me. Okay, my three, like I said earlier, I love Greek retellings, and there's so many right now, um, and I read all of them. Um, my second one is just pure romance. If it looks like Emily Henry, I will read it. Right. Lastly, I put fantasy because I didn't understand that we could go into all of these different <laughs> subgenres. Sub I got really specific. <laughs> but like, I guess it's obviously romance fantasy. But I like, I like, I like an epic fantasy. I just have to like learn a little along the way. I'm gonna say fantasy as a whole. I think, yeah, I think that, that definitely right? counts. Okay. All right, the two places that we read most often. Oh. Um, the number one place that I read is my reading nook. I have a little room in my house. I'm pretty sure it was like a mud room <laughs> before we moved in. And then I painted it dark green, put a bunch of books in there, and now it's my reading nook. And I, it's the perfect spot to read. Um, and then the other most common place that I read is my car. I have not listened to music in the car in easily a decade. I only listen to audiobooks everywhere that I go, so yeah. when I'm in the car, I'm reading. Yes, in a safe way. Yes. <laughs> okay, mine are, I only have one, and it's my bed. That's the only place to read, is your bed, in my opinion. You just have to be cozy up. And don't you read, like, before you go to bed? Yes. But if I'm reading in the middle of the day, I will go to my bed and read. To read? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But I will lay on my husband's side because it's like the daytime. That is so funny. Really? Yeah. Should we do like one unpopular opinion? Yeah, let's do unpopular. Opinion. Yeah. My unpopular opinion is that I don't particularly enjoy Taylor Jenkins' read. Oh yeah, that definitely is your unpopular opinion. I don't, I don't dislike her books, but everybody seems to love her writing style, and I don't, I don't like the way that she formats her books. And I think it's almost like, it, I don't know, I don't know. I, just, I don't think they're very good. I do think there are mixed opinions on Taylor Jenkins' read. Yeah. I only read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and I, I did like it, but I don't know if I would like her other books. I'll probably read them at some point just to yeah. find out. My unpopular opinion, I never have and 
probably never will read a Colleen Hoover. If it's for you, that's great, but I don't think it's for me. And yes, I'm being hypocritical because I've never read <laughs> any of them. So for all I know, they could be like my next favorites, like Ugly Love is going to be my new personality, but... I can't read a book called Ugly Love. <laughs> now, that being said, if you had to read one, if you were forced to, which one do you think you would read? Um, well, what's your big, You're what's your main it? one? It, it starts Verity. with us or something? Oh. oh, Verity. I would read Verity. It sounds stupid. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. What's the one that there's like the film Yeah, I, I, thought, I think it's, it, it ends with us or it starts, it starts with that. <laughs> I think, I don't like her titles. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we're not Colleen Hoover people. Coho. <laughs> we're not Coho people. Until we read one and then we delete this video in a couple months. Yep. Because we it. <laughs> okay, and now we're just going to throw in a couple questions from a random makeup tag. We're not doing the whole thing because it's 21 questions and we would be filming for like three hours. So we just kind of pulled out a couple of good ones. Okay, so the first question is, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? Um, so the oldest makeup product in my collection is a NARS Orgasm Blush from, I think, 2011. It's really old. I don't put it on my face. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> I'm not applying it, but it's something about it is sentimental. I don't even like the Orgasm shade anymore, but oh, at the time yeah. it was like iconic and I was so excited to have it. My oldest product is whatever Elena has bought that has sat in my room. What comes to mind is the first Naked palette. Yes, that's a good one. That. Yes. That's a pretty palette. I mean, I don't use it, obviously, like you, but I have not gotten rid of it. And when that came out, we were all like, what? Yeah. All neutrals, eyeshadow palette. <laughs> now it's like, okay, yawn. Okay, our next question. Our next question is, what is the newest product that you've added to your collection? For me, that would be a couple Rare Beauty products that I purchased for an upcoming video. I got the bronzer stick, I got the brow duo, um, and I got the eyeshadow primer, and love, oh my gosh, Rare Beauty can do no wrong. What did I buy? One of your 17 lipsticks? Yes, I have 17 lipsticks now. She thinks that's a lot. <laughs> it's the Halsey... The About Face. About Face. Cherry Pick Lip cherry Color pick Butter. Lip. <laughs> Is it the Lip Color Butter? Yes! Stop! <laughs> I love this. It doesn't stay on very well, but the color is absolute perfection. I love the shine to it. It's hydrating. It's hydrating. It's beautiful. Yeah. What is a holy grail product for you? Something that you just could not do without. Oh, my holy grail product is MAC Fix Plus. I use it every single time I do my makeup. Okay. Mine is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. Oh yeah, what shade are you now? I go between chocolate and dark brown, and I think at the moment I'm dark brown. Okay, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? For me, this is whatever step I add shimmer or glitter. I just love glitter and I'm waiting for that part and once I tap on that glitter, oof, I'm ready to go. Mine is when I take off my makeup. At the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I personally, like, I, when you put the mascara on and it all comes together, that's like the absolute best part for me. I have a hard time visualizing it until I see my eyes really pop. Okay, and then what's your favorite step in your skincare routine? This was kind of hard for me. I think if I had to pick, I would say eye cream because it feels nice to yeah. apply and like rub something all over yeah. your eye. Because usually sense. you're avoiding your eye all the time, you know? Yeah. What's your favorite skincare step? Honestly, it's my face wash because um, it's this Emma Hardy moisturizing. It is. It literally feels so luxurious when you put it on your face. It feels like a mini spa, and after you take it off, you don't feel tight or anything. It's. It. You just feel like so fresh and luminous. I just love mm. it. You. You just convinced me to try. You should that. try it. The last question is describe describe your skincare routine in five words. Mine can be summed up very simply. Please know I'm talking to myself, not you, the viewer. Stop drying out your skin. Oh my gosh, I have got to stop drying out my skin. Um, I mean, to sum mine up, it's whatever Caroline Hirons tells me to do, which is remove double cleanse, or double cleanse um, treatment, serum, whatever, moisturize. 
that's all the tag questions. So hopefully this helped you get to know us a little better, see what our tastes are like for books and for beauty. If you want to see more from us, check this space. See, see you in the next, next one. one. <laughs> oh no. Oh dear. <laughs>